Or just get back to training if the battery works. Oh my god. I should mute my phone, shouldn't I? Like, everyone's telling me I'm old. I'm not old. Get over it. I'm not a sim either. But I just changed the name and started numbering them again because, in all fairness, I lost count of how many podcasts. My screen there is a lot of brightness. Coming from behind. Jeez. Take this risk, screw it, I'm getting on the bus, going wherever the hell I want, make a video, done. Apart from that, moving away from that, the real theme of the podcast is why I got you here. Um, you know, it's talk about how, like, each day is a gift. That's why they call today the present. And, and these clips will show you that I did not care. Of course, um, it is such a difficult time. For all of us, 2020 has been the year to forget, you know. But adversity is what I deal with every day. So this is nothing new, you know. So I want to just kick this second lockdown in the arse and move on. Because nobody wants to remember all the difficult times we've had this year. But I do believe the scars of the past shape the future. And the scars this year have given me so far, and my life has given me so far, there's been a lot of them, you know, but it does make you better for it in the future. I know that for a fact. However difficult things seem now, they will get better. They can't get worse. And I pray for those who, you know, are struggling financially, have lost their businesses already because of the first lockdown. And yeah, I don't fear it and I'm not worried, but I feel for the other people who are losing their businesses because of this lockdown and their livelihoods, you know. So of course, you know, I feel for them people, but me personally, like, bring it on, lockdown. Do your worst, because I've spent enough time looking inwards, and I've come to realize that I'm tougher than I realize, and a lot of you are, so just bear that in mind when this year is getting you down, and God, it's got all of us down, but we're gonna bounce back because that's what we do, really. We just say up yours to anything that stands in our way. And that is human nature. And this virus can't stop that. Oh, here we are, guys. I'm all, I'm buzzing because I had a coffee just now. Um, I'm going to be bouncing off the roof at some point. <laughs> Hopefully not, you know. But yeah, anyway, this is the place where you hear the real talk. No BS. Just me talking about my experiences in life. Hopefully you can relate along the way. And I'll give you a bit of advice based on my own 27 years on this earth. You know, not too long. Um, I'm still young, but you know. I got mates who are calling me old already. I'm the old man of, of, of the group in that way. I'm the oldest player in my team. Like, everyone's telling me I'm old. I'm not old. Get over it. I'm not a sim either. Um, just a bit of banter. But um, now I've got some serious things to talk about. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the way I do this podcast. I, I've made so many. Yeah, it's episode five of Real Talk. But I just changed the name and started numbering them again, because, in all fairness, I lost count of how many podcasts I did. Remember, like, the first two or three, um, literally, I did in Italian and English, and that was annoying. That was a nightmare. Just did not get it right. But the meaning was good. There was one, like, where I, I did some research for, and I, I hate doing research. That's, like, the worst part of anything, really. But sometimes it's got to be done. So, like, for those videos I did, um, there was one about, um, yeah, true knowledge is knowing you know nothing. I can't remember who said that, but that day I was feeling really intelligent, let's say. Yeah, I have my moments, you know. I have my moments. Um, and, yeah, but it's like, I, I don't have that every day. Some days I just feel like acting like an idiot, making funny, stupid videos, reacting to stuff on here. When the videos don't get taken down, that is. Um, but yeah, first of all, you know, hope you're all doing okay. 
Um, second vaccines are out. I've had mine, so all good there. You know, slowly things are getting back to normal. You know, people sitting outdoors, freezing their asses off, eating out at restaurants, at least, you know. Idiots. I mean, it's freezing cold, you know. The other day, yeah, I went out to a cafe to have some soup, right? It started raining. It took me four hours to eat the soup. Terrible, terrible day. That's why I don't go out to eat soup anymore. And if you're not aware that was a joke, then get off my channel. Then just unsubscribe right now. And if you laughed at that joke, also unsubscribe and leave because it's really not funny. I never thought I'd tell a joke on a podcast. And I'm just looking at my scripts, to be honest. I was going to pretend like I've got no scripts. But even Obama back in the day, or whatever president you can think of, or political leader, they all have something to read off, I'm telling you. There's no way that they're coming up with those words. I feel sorry for Joe Biden, you know, with... I mean, because he's got a bit of a, a stammer, I think. Or he's dyslexic, I can't remember, one of the two. Or both. But people always took the mick out of him. Saying, oh, he's old, oh, he's... It's because his brain's old or something, I don't know. Or he's, like, got whatever old people get. Early signs of dementia, but like, that's harsh. Like, it's just reading auto cues hard. And I'm just scrolling up. Why am I scrolling up and down? Um, but yeah, so back to the vaccine. Finally got this vaccine. And I didn't get a blood clot. All the negativity around that was ridiculous. I think it was more political than anything, to be honest. It wasn't really accurate because it's like one in 100,000 or something. Like, you're more likely to get COVID than get a blood clot. I know people that have got COVID even having had the vaccine, not to alarm you in any way, but that can happen. Um, God, I've just seen my screen there and there's a lot of brightness coming from behind. Jeez. Oh my God, I look like a bloody angel descending from heaven or whatever you call it. That, that is too bright. Oh my. Gonna have to do something about that. Nah. Yeah. One sec. You won't even notice, literally. You, I'll blink and I'll be back. Okay, guys, I think we're good now. Um, yeah, you can actually see my head. <laughs> Top half. Well, who cares? Um, where was I, anyway? Yeah, vaccines. Something along the lines of a vaccine, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't see why people are sitting outdoors, freezing their asses off just to eat. I, I see the point, like, we've been locked up all this time, we want our freedoms back. Um, we're going to get more of them back soon, um, on the 17th of May, so I'm really looking forward to that day. Um, we'll see. I know where I'll be, I'll be in the pub for sure. Maybe not vlogging that because it might get messy. Um, we'll see. Because vlogging in the pub hasn't always been the best idea for me. I just end up forgetting or filming something incriminating. Um, you can be sure that I'll be in the pub. Though. So I managed to kind of get back to making videos on a regular basis, if you call it that. There's a time where I could bang out three or four in a week. But it would just be the same old thing again and again. You know, I go for more quality over quantity. At the beginning it was just quantity, just get as many out. Get the practice of making a video, editing, putting it out there, you know, self-promotion. Uh, well, all you do is post it on Instagram and Facebook. Self-promotion. It's pretty easy nowadays, you know. Um, but I'll get into multi-talented YouTubers later on. Not me. Um... But, you know, I think about the whole normal life before pandemic. I'm like, the thing I miss the most is literally being able to get on the bus, go somewhere um, and film a video. Mainly central London or like Camden or anywhere, you know, and meet up with people and just be outdoors and like it's things we take for granted. But um, no, 
talk about not going out much in lockdown. Um, before, like, 2019, 2018, I never really took the bus anywhere. Um, obviously, I, I've always been, like, driving or using, using my car, you know, um, that kind of thing. Um, but I changed it up and just went on the bus. One day, I just got rid of that. It was a bit of a phobia, I'll be honest. I was like, oh, what if it breaks down? London transport is useless, and it is at times, but it is really good at other times. You know, I'm going to be grateful for it when I get back to being able to use the bus, and just go wherever I want to make a video, do what I do best, you know. It won't be long. Um, I'm, not, there's an, I'm not fearful of, I don't know, fearful is not the right word, but like, there is a risk, even with the vaccine, you know. Um, but it's a risk at some point, I might just say, you know, take this risk, screw it, I'm getting on the bus, going wherever the hell I want, make a video, done. Uh, job done, you know, stop off at a pub, get a pint, or, well, I'm more of a whiskey guy, but yeah, well, at, at the moment, I don't really care, get back in the pub, drink whatever's the strongest, really, or alcoholic, at least, doesn't really matter at this point, um, but yeah, fingers crossed, you know, there's going to come a point where I just say, who cares, I'll just go wherever. Because um, it's something I, I do well. Just going on an adventure and making a video about it. It's better than just going to the local park. Which I do way too much. I'm trying to make the same park look different. Well, there's two two parks I go to, but... I'm trying to make them look different than they already look. Nah. Like, you're going to realise by now. If you live around here, you'll know. If you don't, maybe not so much, but... Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Prince Philip passed away. Um, R.I.P. Duke of Edinburgh. Um, don't take this the wrong way, but my first reaction was like a sly giggle. I'm not even being funny. I was like, oh, after I was like, oh, poor Queen, all that. But how many people like die that we don't even know? We don't even give praise to. You know? Did I know this guy personally? No. Do we all think we did? Kind of, because he was on the TV all the time. But did we know him personally? Not really. Um, yeah, and say, believe what you want, I mean, be offended by me saying that or not, I don't really care because you're entitled to your opinion, you know, I'm not harming anyone by saying that. Oh, someone's offended, oh. How many, if I could count how many times I've been offended, if I had a quid for every time, you know, it'd be a lot, but like, the older I get, the more like I think, what's the point, wasting my energy? But then some people... The older they get, the more they take things to heart, in some way. I don't know, everyone's different. Because when you're younger, it's like, who cares? You know? I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get over it. But yeah, anyway, um, I believe that like, every grandfather deserves the respect Prince Philip got. Or like the praise, or like, you know, having an award in their name. It's been difficult for so many families. Many of them didn't get a proper funeral. In lockdown, he got somewhat of a funeral. I um, you know, I'm not a royalist. I'm not a big fan of the royal family, you know. Um, getting rich off all our hard work. You know, and they're born into a job where they're expected to be perfect from day one. And marry the perfect woman. Yeah, it didn't work out for for Charles, did it? I mean, they offed his, his first wife. Um, whether you believe that or not, I believe that. Something dodgy went on for sure. Some sort of dodgy stuff went on. Um, and we learned that don't drive through a tunnel in Paris at night. Because paparazzi might murder you. Well, that's what they say anyway. You know, um, whether it was or not, you know. Prince Harry and Meghan leaving kind of is similar. Like, Prince Harry saw what happened to his mum. Um, and saw it could happen again. Well, starting with all the hatred. Whatever comes next, I don't know. But the hatred and... Obviously, the racism too. Like, it was probably Prince Philip that is the one that was asking about the skin tone of, of, of Archie. Um, sadly, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Probably Charles as well. One of them, but like, could have been him. And maybe like, well, well, no matter what you say, him passing away kind of distracted everyone. Because now, if you say anything, it's like. Oh, how dare you, they, they're grieving, blah, blah, blah. Can't be talking about other things. 
you know? And maybe the whole situation upset Philip, you know what I mean? Like, his grand grandson leaving, based on of the way he was being treated. Right, well, and whoever said that, that obviously racist comment, but we're not getting into that. I mean, the whole Piers Morgan thing made me laugh. Um, but yeah, moving on, because who cares, right? He got, he got rinsed by the weatherman. Who are you? The weatherman just rinsed Piers Morgan and said everything almost everyone was thinking. But, um, yeah. And the, some of them are probably nonsense, I'm telling you. Prince Andrew, for sure. Weirdo. But, yeah. I'm not here to moan about other people all day. I don't know why I even put that in there, to be honest. I mean, apart from that, moving away from that, the real theme of the podcast is why I got you here. Um, you know, it's talk about how, like, each day is a gift. That's why they call today the present. It's like that famous saying from, uh, what, I can't remember what movie, Kung Fu Panda. You know, it's like, to, what is it? Tomorrow is a mystery, yesterday is history, and today is a gift. Something like that, anyway. You know, something like, don't dwell on the past. The future is what the future is. Um, but today is the, the thing you're living in. So you've got to make the most of it, really. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at, anyway. I mean, I've always said, you know, live in the moment. But recent times, uh, that's been proven to be the case. But it's very difficult because, like, you can't really have fun in the moment at the moment if you're locked up in your house in some sort of lockdown. It's a bit difficult, but, like, the last year made me appreciate it more and value it more because, like, I'm, I'm thinking either of the future when it's getting better or the past as trying to remember the good times, you know. And either of those things can cause you to get quite down and depressed, I guess. Um, people who think about the future a lot or think about the past, those are people prone to more de depression. Um, I don't know if I thought it, I don't really, I wouldn't say I'm depressed, but I'm quite a positive person. But not everyone's lucky enough to say that. And especially in the last year, mental health has been a big issue for a lot of people. And I've seen it firsthand. Um, and it's not pretty. And so you've got to use that word carefully, depression and all that comes with it, because some people would say they are, but they're really not. And then there's the opposite where like, some people say they're not, but maybe they are, and they don't even realize. So maybe I don't even realize, I don't know. It's hard to say, but like, you know, all we can do in this time is look forward to the freedoms we will get and think of the good times in the past and getting back to them. So doing that can make you kind of a bit sad, more sad at the same time. It's a difficult one because we all want our freedom back. But at what cost, you know? It's difficult to put into words, really. Like, there's both ends of, of the spectrum. But people who live in the moment, those people, it's impossible. It's really impossible for them to get down and depressed, really. Two different... Down is one thing, depressed is another thing. But, you know, if you live in the moment, it's impossible to feel that sad about anything, really. And I'm trying to say live in the moment. I'm not saying try and be happy all the time, because you won't be. That's life. It's ups and downs. Things happen. Shit happens, you know. You're going to make mistakes, you're going to learn from them. But that's the other thing I want to say, you know. Growth is a big part of what I talk about on this channel. I've changed as a person since being that 24-year-old who started YouTube, or 24 year old I was. Um, and I'll get into that later, like, what, how, we, how it's come full circle. Without me even realising from the beginning I was a storyteller, you know. I'll get into that a bit later anyway. But, moving on, like, isn't it strange how, like, many people in this pandemic, 
it's what they needed to realise what is really important and it took that to give me this outlook on life what really is important to each of us as individuals you know like the little things the things we took for granted um, that we missed out on really and you know it's changed all of us this year but it's made me realise that having fun you got to make the most of those moments like having a laugh bit of banter because you know we've been missing out on so much like personal contact with other people with human beings you know but the the best advice I can give to you guys is you know if you don't like who you are as a person or don't accept who you are you can't grow as an individual um, and maybe you can you know shit start a new leaf shed your skin if you like like change who you are to some extent but you've got to accept who you are and only then can you move forward you know if you well it's, it's difficult but like putting yourself down don't help you've got to have a bit of confidence and belief that you're going to achieve what you're working towards um and yeah i'm very like self-critical i've said it before in that video, that I'm famous video, um, that was in the intro, and I said it many times. Like, but you know, you you got to take everything with a pinch of salt, really. Don't just like say, "Oh, I'm, I'll never achieve th that or this or whatever." Um, even if maybe you're not going to achieve, just believe that you might, or just put in the effort. Like with YouTube, I started with no intention of still doing it four years later. But here we are, it's, it's, it's like the, the best thing I've done, my, I'll be honest. And here we are, you know, I'm still doing it for years, four years down the line or however many years. It's weird. And yeah, the editing gets annoying sometimes, but telling a story is what I love doing. And at the beginning, maybe it's not what I love doing, but it's what I was good at. It's what I've become good at, really. Maybe I wasn't even good at it at the beginning, but it was there. That ability to have a conversation and talk to people. Which was missed the last year. So you guys really helped, you know. Being able to talk to a camera, at least. And get my opinion out there. And maybe help other people in some way. Or maybe not, maybe just... Every now and then, there's some videos I make that just help you forget. Like all the BS of life. I mean, yeah, in life you just got to like be a realist at the same time, but be an optimist. It's hard to do both. Um, you know, you got to navigate through life expecting to make mistakes and but not expecting bad things, but like, you know. Expect the best, prepare for the worst, if that's the right saying. Um, but just know that you're going to make mistakes, but you will learn from them. Don't deliberately go out to make mistakes, to learn more. It's not how it works, but if you're actually a, a trying, working towards anything, you're bound to make mistakes along the way. And, you know, I've, I've said it before, it's self-belief. But not overconfidence is really important. You can't confuse those two. Like, there's times where I just act cocky in videos and, and um, you know, it, it makes good content, you know. But self-belief, you know, I've got a bit of that. But at times, I put my, I probably put myself down more than I should. Um, self-critical. But then again, that makes you more self-aware. Self-awareness is... Something I've, I've gained a lot in the last three or four years. Well, maybe last seven or eight years. Um, like, what you say, how it affects other people. You know, some situation I might have said, screw you to someone, to their face. But then, looking back, realise, probably not the best thing to do. Or like, certain emotions you feel. More than my actions, like, feeling a certain way. Um, that's fine. Like, feeling maybe hatred or anger towards people or certain situations 
caused by certain people, but realising that revenge is not the way, really. Like, maybe forgiveness. It's not like I'm going to be best friends with that person, but forgiveness and moving on and realising that there's not, nothing lost, really, from that situation. Nothing gained by having a beef over it. But yeah, like I did at the beginning of this video with the intro, you know, I look back at other videos, you know, the one called I'm Famous Now, talking about the article that was in the paper that I was in. Um, basically, it's like an article about like disability sports and disability football. And there was a part about Hardship Football featuring me and there's, there's like a small biography um, I wrote about myself and I told a story really of why I like Paragia Football, what it means to me. A few simple questions I answered but I realised, wow, I'm actually a storyteller. And that was only in preparing for that video and in reading the article I thought, okay, I'm, I've, I've got a talent here. M maybe it's my only talent, I don't know. Well, I'm not, I, I don't know, I'm not going to start talking about everything I'm good and bad at, but storytelling and like having a conversation is why well, I enjoy having conversations and talking to people and stuff, telling a story, you know. Um, and I think part of realising that is why now like, I keep a diary, like for the last three or four months, just saying whatever I'm feeling that day. Or talking about things that have passed just to get them off my chest I guess and that's a way of storytelling like telling yourself a story like I'm writing it to myself basically no one's gonna read it it's just me I'm writing random stuff that nobody that maybe that I wouldn't tell anyone you know what I mean but I just write it in the diary and it's done and it's there and I go back to it whenever I want you know and it can make you um, appreciate things more but anyway in the video I'm explaining and you know, I talking about believing in myself and that's what watching that video back made me do even more and in making that video you know maybe it's obvious like I tell stories that's what I do on YouTube considering um, you know, that's what I do every day on YouTube it's normal for me God, it's got dark in here now. Sun must have gone in. Um, anyway, yeah, but it's like... It's normal for me to tell a story without even realising. That's why I'm doing alright with these podcasts. It's a different style. It's getting my opinion out there. But I never believed that, oh, I'm a good storyteller. It's not like I went into YouTube believing that. Um, it's strange because... You know, the younger version of me might not have appreciated being in the paper, but nowadays I appreciate it more, especially what I've been through in the last few years, I mean what we've all been through, um, or maybe I've just grown up as a person, but I've valued it a lot and it kind of upholds what I do on YouTube in some ways, it proves that point that I can tell a story, you know, um, I don't know, maybe something just clicked but after that. I began to be began to believe it more, and it's made me better at telling a story because I actually believe it. At the beginning, I was like, "Oh, I got the gift of the gab. That's it," you know. And you know, when starting the channel over four years ago, something that I think of now is you know that phrase, you know, "Jack of all trades, but master of none," and I don't want to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. I want to be a master of something at least. Storytelling, well maybe not YouTube itself, but storytelling. And telling the story my way, based on what I've learned in life. I don't know, at the beginning I never thought of all these things, but now I think about it, you know. Um, it's kind of... Being, being a YouTuber is you know, you've got mul multiple things you have to do. It's like being, like, I mean, this platform, YouTube, full of people that are like Swiss Army Knives, and they've got multiple things they can do. 
you know, they're jack of all trades, but a master of none, really. Um, but some of them are multi talented, you know, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, KSI. They can do multiple different things and uh, succeed in them. Um, f f probably through their business brains and like intelligence that you don't always see firsthand. And maybe they hide behind this facade for the sake of YouTube. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm focused on what I do on YouTube and trying to be good at that at least. Because not everyone's like going to be good at more than one thing, you know. And if you are, you're going to be a jack of all trades in some ways. I'm not saying all these YouTubers are. Some of them have done very well changing it up. But of course I'm capable of shooting a video editing it. But my biggest strength is telling the story. That's what I make my money from. Oh. Dell, okay. Message from Dell. Whatever. Yeah, that's how I make my money, telling stories. And I was invited on a podcast earlier in the year. I was on a webinar last year for um, Padre Football, uh, with some Italian Padre Football players from the Padre Football FA over in Italy, um, who I've kept in touch with and followed what they've been doing on social media. And yeah, it's just humbling that my sport will be in Italy soon or is in Italy and is growing fast. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to make this video about Padre Football, but it's very much part of my life and we're getting back to it soon, hopefully, if my battery doesn't die after not being used for six, seven months, however long it's been since I took it for a spin in the park. Um, but the weather's getting better, so I might be doing that again soon. Um, or just get back to training if the battery works. Oh my god. I should mute my phone, shouldn't I? So there I, I'm talking about growth and all that. Still made a mistake, I left my phone. Um, well, I didn't mute my phone, so... It's quite funny, really. But who cares, right? Unless I get copyrighted for the, the song that was on there. Um, probably didn't sound like a song to use. Part of a Pink Floyd. Uh, Pink Floyd? Part of the Kings of Leon song. <laughs> but yeah. And yeah, if you didn't really realise, like I said at the beginning, I'm drinking coffee again. I went three, three or four years without drinking coffee. I missed it so much. Well, I realise how much I missed it now, in hindsight. But yeah, I was, I was saying how the lighting was good, but I've had to alter it like three times in the video. Like the blinds. <laughs> Because um, you need a certain amount of light. Um, but that's something I've taught myself through YouTube and seeing the way other people do it. Like, it, without watching other YouTubers, I wouldn't have realised so many things about YouTube. From Casey Nye's that, to you know, people like PewDiePie and, and ga for gaming content and stuff. That I started to do a lot more. In the beginning, it was just random live streams. Then, now I'm editing them into videos, playing Minecraft. Um, which I never thought I would be doing. But there you go, you know. And people say they've been bored in lockdown, of course. Some people have, but I've got um, a channel to work on, so I was never bored, you know. I had the choice of doing live streams. So there's, there's always something to keep me busy. Um, and the good news is I've got a new laptop to edit even faster and you know, one that actually works at a decent speed, you know. The old one probably had a virus on it. Well, I saw the music I'm downloading illegally. Well, cut that out. <laughs> edit. <laughs> or edit that bit out, you know. With the music I download legally. Yeah. We've all been there. But yeah, guys. Um, I always say I want to um, do the podcast more regularly regularly and get my words out but maybe I should spread them out more so I can get more out of each one in in the, in between do more videos um but yeah either way things are going all right and I always say that in some something happens you know typical I just want a summer holiday this year hopefully I can get one get to Italy um got my new car arriving soon 
Um, pretty much the same van as I've got now. Um, just different colour. And a bit newer. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that. Everything's happening so fast now. Uh, I need a haircut still. That's the next thing I've got to do. You know, um, and do more live streams, of course. I want to make another vlog at some point. Like I said, I'm going to make like a highlight video. I don't know what, what you would call it, but like get the best clips from my old podcasts, put them together in a video. Um, to enforce what I'm saying today, really, and the advice I've given you guys, and you know, living the moment. It's fairly obvious, but sometimes you can forget that, and like. I find myself forgetting that sometimes and like getting a bit down or negative or pissed off <laughs> um, but it's weird because like the um, I've got a, a kind side as well but I can get very angry at the same time not angry but like well people that know me probably don't even know me angry for real but like when you're in your own home, you know, with your family, just, you act, you act your, your real self in some ways, at times, at times, um, but people, I don't know, people that do see me angry, that never have to kind of get shocked, like, whoa, um, now I'm a positive person, I'm quite a happy person, but I'm in my own, own head quite a lot, overthinking things, um, which can be annoying, um, yeah, but I try to stay positive overall. Don't let all the thoughts cloud your judgment. And sometimes they can. Um, that's normal. And we live in a world where it's too much about perfection and being this and being that. Um, and people care too much what people think. Yeah, there's a line you don't really cross. But like, if yeah, if I offended someone earlier talking about me, me laughing at Prince Philip, um, well. All I can say is, now the crown has been spoiled, so if you watch it you know the ending, basically. You know what happens to him in the end. So that's ruined, you can't watch that. And you know, I'm forever cracking jokes. Um, it's, the best, it's the best medicine for anything really. Laughter as well. Not that my jokes are that funny all the time. But um, you can't go too far without banter. In this house anyway. But it's strange because I get the the kind, thoughtful side. Probably from my dad. And I'm not saying my mum's mean or anything. But the sharpness. and Not sharpness but like the other side of me is from mum probably. Like I can just snap and just get angry over nothing. Some days. And some days I'm really considerate and feel bad if I upset someone else. But it varies. So I've got those, that balance, you know, which is good. I'm lucky to have a stable household, you know, especially through this pandemic, you know, a loving family, which a lot of people didn't have. And maybe they were stuck in the house with abusive people, you know, and the ability to leave that place and go to school, go to wherever to escape that was a good thing. And suddenly they couldn't because of this pandemic. But I... I try not to talk about it all the time. But it's what we're going through, you know, you've got to live in the moment. And it is part of reality now. You've got to face facts, it's not like, at the beginning, oh, it's going to go away eventually. It's not, it's here to stay, really. I just feel bad for, like, other countries. But they're suffering even more now, with the variants and all this. But I don't want to dwell on that, really. It's not good to dwell on these things, really. It's just what we're living in. It's getting better, though, here anyway. You know, if you start thinking about the whole world and feeling guilty about every other situation, then how are you going to live your life? Yeah, you should care. But, like, focus on your own situation first. The last year has made people realise what is important, like, their immediate family, you know, their family. I say immediate, but, like, family in general. Friends. And just asking people if they're okay, that's it. Simple as whatever way you do it, through banter or whatever, but just, you know, don't just cut people off because you can't see them 
think, well, maybe some people can. But for me, it's been probably even more lonely at times than other people realise. But I'm not saying, oh, I have a pity party. Oh, poor, poor me. No, because I've made the best of it and I've continued in my channel through that time. Got to over 100 subscribers, been on these podcasts and interviews. So I've been busy, let's just say that. And those were the, the, the positive things. Things that maybe I wouldn't have been so proud of in a normal year. Because it's just another thing. But in a pandemic, to go through, go through it and then still achieve things is great. Um, some people lost their jobs, their whole income, their livelihoods. I've been lucky enough not to and still be able to do what I love. Um, so thank you, karma or whatever it is. I don't know. Whatever, it, if there is a God or whatever. I'm not going to get into religion because all that does is cause wars. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there, guys. I want to thank you guys yet again for joining me on episode five of the Real Talk podcast. Um, no BS, this is the real, you know, the, the place where you get your real talk. Um, hopefully I can teach you something. Hopefully you learn something. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you had a bit of a laugh. Maybe got you thinking, you know. Um, maybe you look forward to something. Or anything, I don't know, any sort of emotion. Stick a like, subscribe, all the usual, you know, take it easy, guys. Yeah, again, thank you for joining me. And I am out of here. Never do this. That is for help. Hate. I, don't know. I hate my intros and my outros. Alright, guys, take it easy, fam. Nothing.